Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the Bank of Canada Museum's first virtual speaker event, A Bank Notable Reflections. We would like to begin by acknowledging that we are meeting on the land of the First Nation, Inuit and Métis. We pay our respects to the Indigenous peoples across the country and to their ancestors for their immeasurable contributions to this country. So we have a really dynamic presentation lined up for you tonight, but first I'd like to touch on a couple housekeeping points. During our presentation, our speakers will be calling on you to provide some feedback and guidance on how you want the presentation to proceed. A choose your own adventure of sorts. Please enter your suggestions or responses by selecting the question and answer section on your upper right side of your screen. Type your answer into the composition box and hit send. If you'd like to send your question anonymously, select the Ask Anonymously button before you hit send. Your response will be noted by our moderators in the background. The same function can be used at the end of the presentation during our question period. And I'll go over these instructions again at the end of the presentation as well. With that out of the way, I'd like to introduce you to our speakers tonight, Boyd Lanstra and Suzette Argo. Boyd and Suzette are specialists with the Bank of Canada Currency Department and are helping spearhead the consultation and selection process for the design of the new $5 note. We are very lucky to have them with us tonight to discuss the next steps in the creation of the $5 note now that the shortlist of nominees has been published. Boyd and Suzette, the virtual floor is yours. Thanks, Nicole. Hi everyone, my name is Suzette Argo. I work with the Bank of Canada's Currency Department and over the course of the last couple of years, it's the best part of my job has been to plan and manage public consultations. Our story begins on January 29th of this year when the bank asked the public to nominate iconic Canadians who might appear on the next $5 bill. We asked that the nominees meet some basic criteria. They needed to be Canadian, have been deceased for at least 25 years, and that they be real. We also asked that they have demonstrated outstanding leadership or achievement benefiting Canada and Canadians. By way of example, Anne of Green Gables, not eligible, she's a fictional character. Her creator, Lucy Maud Montgomery, absolutely eligible. You did not let us down. By the end of the campaign, more than 45,000 people had responded to our call and we had a list of 625 qualified nominees. If ever you are interested, you can see the list of nominees on our website. Now that list was presented to an independent advisory council of seven Canadians who we will meet in a moment, and it was up to them to select from those 625 a short list of candidates. Once the short list was identified, the bank conducted a survey of a representative sample of Canadians and held focus groups to gauge their views on the shortlisted candidates. Historical biographies were also prepared for each candidate, and we asked three Indigenous scholars to provide their feedback on those biographies through the lens of Indigenous peoples in Canada. The Advisory Council reviewed the results of that research and confirmed their shortlist of candidates. That list was submitted to the Governor of the Bank of Canada, but he does not make the final decision. Governor Macklem submits the list to the Minister of Finance, and it is Minister Freeland who will select a portrait subject from the list developed by our Advisory Council. So let's meet the Advisory Council. Our Independent Advisory Council is comprised of eminent Canadians from academia, the cultural sector and civil society. And you can see here that they represent as much of the country as we possibly can with just seven people. So our Advisory Council is comprised of Nicholas Bell from Calgary, Michel Coté from Quebec City, Charlotte Gray from Ottawa, Benoit Yot, Montreal, Lucy Idlaut in Iqaluit, Dr. Natalie Sleno from Yellowknife and Candace Thomas from Halifax. To prepare them for their discussions, we provided short biographies on each of those 625 qualified nominees in both English and French. Later on in the process, we would undertake those in-depth research into the shortlisted candidates, but at the beginning, it was really important to us that each qualified nominee's history be understood and reviewed. Our advisory council met virtually from May to July of this year. 
Each meeting included heartfelt deliberations and often very difficult decisions about which nominees would or wouldn't move forward in the process. The 625 qualified nominees represent the very best Canada has to offer. They were individuals committed to building a better Canada. To guide their decisions, the Advisory Council agreed on a set of guiding principles. Their ultimate goal was to create a list they would be proud of and that emphasized the diverse contributions of Canadians to our shared history. Ultimately, they were looking for positive change, a national icon, universality, uniqueness, and someone whose impact was relevant today. So without further ado, let's meet our shortlist. So in a moment, I will introduce you to each of these amazing people in turn, but for now, I would like you to meet our shortlist of eight. We have Pitsio Lakashuna, Robertine Barry, Juan Alexander Kamiao, Binaswi, Terry Fox, Lada Hitchmanova, Isapo Muxica, and Onondeo. Look carefully because one of these people will appear on the next $5 banknote. So let's meet Pitsiolak Ashuna. She was born in the first decade of the 20th century, was a self-taught artist whose drawings and prints have been internationally exhibited and which are held by museums and galleries throughout Canada. Her work, which, which reflects her own lived experiences following a traditional Inuit semi-nomadic lifestyle, provides a lively and vivid record of the old ways once followed by the Inuit of the Eastern Arctic. This is Pitsiolak Ashuna. Next, we meet Robertine Barry. Also known by her literary pseudonym, Françoise, she was the first female French Canadian journalist and a relentless advocate for many social justice causes, especially women's equality in society. Both in her written works and public speeches, Barry was a staunch activist who championed the causes of women's suffrage, women's access to a university education, shelters for the poor and for female victims of domestic violence the regulation of child labor, and the establishment of a secular Quebec Ministry of Public Education. This is Robertine Barry. Binaswi of Francis Pegamagabo a veteran of the First World War, was the most highly decorated Indigenous soldier in Canadian history. Following that conflict, he assumed leadership positions with the Wasaxing First Nation in Perry Island, Ontario, and later participated in regional and national advocacy movements to promote Indigenous rights in Canada. This is Binaswi. I'd like you to meet Juan Alexander Kamiao. He was the first known Chinese Canadian born in Canada. Fluent in both Cantonese and English, he used his language skills to bridge the divide between Vancouver's English speaking and Chinese communities. Working as a police interpreter and actively involved in key Chinese community organizations, he was a voice for dis disenfranchised people and a positive influence in helping transform racialized attitudes towards Chinese people in Canada. Juan Alexander Kamiao. Pitsiolak 
perhaps one of our better known nominees. This is Terry Fox. After losing part of his right leg to cancer, Terry Fox campaigned to raise national awareness and funding for cancer research by running his Marathon of Hope, a cross Canada 42 kilometer daily run on his prosthetic leg. By February 1981, $24.7 million had been raised, or $1 for every Canadian. His run was interrupted just past the halfway point when the cancer reached his lungs and ultimately took his life. Today, annual Terry Fox runs are held all over the world to raise money for cancer research. In 2020, the Marathon of Hope marks its 40th anniversary. Terry Fox. Lada Hichmanova was one of Canada's earliest grassroots humanitarians. She came to Canada in 1942 as a Czech-born refugee and founded the Uni Unitarian Service Committee of Canada in 1945. Recognizable from her Canadian television appeals for support, she devoted her life to helping people in need around the world, especially children, and inspired others to give generously to relief and development projects in Europe Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong, South Vietnam, Palestine, India, Nepal, Indonesia, and Africa. This is Lada Hitchmanova. Isapo Muxika, Crowfoot was a leader of the Blackfoot Confederacy and was known for his judicious use of diplomacy and for being an advocate for peace between Indigenous nations and with settlers. He was instrumental in the Treaty 7 negotiations and in preventing the Blackfoot Confederacy from participating in the Northwest Resistance of 1885. Later in life, he also fostered peace with neighboring Indigenous peoples. Isapo Muxica. Last but not least, Onondeo, or Frederick Ogilvy Loft, a Mohawk chief, First World War veteran, and political and social activist who founded the first pan-Canadian Indigenous organization in December 1918 to advocate for both the protection and expansion of Indigenous rights. In doing so, he helped lay the groundwork for contemporary regional and national Indigenous rights organizations in Canada. Onondeo. These eight iconic Canadians were selected from more than 600 eligible nominations submitted by you, Canadians, during a six week public consultation process. Nearly 45,000 people participated in the call for nominations. As you look at this list, remember that one of these eight people is the portrait subject of the next $5 bill. We just don't know who yet. So we are proud to have participated along with the general public, with you, in the selection of the person who will be featured on this new bill. And we're delighted that this process has brought forward so many of the people who helped shape our country. And with that, I'm gonna hand this over to Boyd Lanster, our visual content specialist, who will talk to you about how we'll create a banknote inspired by one of these eight amazing people. Boyd. Thanks, Suzette, and hello, everybody. My name is Boyd Lanster, and I'm a senior analyst visual content in the currency department with the Bank of Canada. My role with the bank is to research and recommend what might appear on new banknotes, and then to work with our design team and technical experts to integrate that visual content throughout the banknote development process. 
So I'm very much involved with the images, symbols, patterns, and everything you'll see on a Canadian banknote. When researching and recommending these various forms of visual content, you might think that my role would involve a lot of talking, and maybe this evening it does. However, for me to do this job well, I in fact have to do a lot of listening. And that's because we work extensively with subject matter experts when developing everything that appears on a new note. We work as well with stakeholders, such as families of the portrait subjects, or related organizations and communities. So even though at this point, our large public nomination process has ended, Canadians continue to contribute to and influence the banknotes design. I'm gonna pick up the story from where Suzette has left off to tell you what happens next in the development of a new note, how we determine and decide what should appear on it. And we're also gonna try something special that we've never done before, because tonight we want you to be part of our design process. From your homes, you're gonna help us to create Canada's next banknote. Are you ready? Let's go. As Suzette mentioned, our list of portrait subject candidates are packaged together in an official recommendation and submitted to the Minister of Finance who, as per the Bank of Canada Act, will decide who the portrait subject is for the next $5 note. And our next step begins some months later with a telephone call from the Minister's office. This is one of the most exciting times of the whole project because this is when we learn who the portrait subject is going to be. So, so let's accept the call and we're going to ask you, who do you want for us to explore as part of this evening's presentation? Which one of our eight portrait subjects would you suggest? If you were the Minister of Finance for one night, who would you choose? If you could please type in your selection into the question box that's on your screen and our moderators will start to review your responses. Here's our candidate list to, uh, to help you with those names. You could please write who you'd like to talk about tonight, who you'd like to spend a little time exploring this evening. Please type in your response in that question box. As a now reminder, it's to the top and to the right of your screen. Thank you. Now we're gonna give you a little bit less time than what we give the Minister of Finance, but please do give it a little bit of thought. Okay. Who would you like to discuss tonight? What's coming through, Nicole? Well, I have a vote for um, Francis McManabo, and we got one for Terry Fox, another, Oh, one for Shuna, Terry Fox. Oh, Ipsa Musica, Crowfoot. Wow, we have a lot of, you know what? I have to say I'm really excited because it looks like everybody's giving a lot of love tonight, which is always fantastic. I have a couple for Alexander. Uh, Robertin. Robertin. Oh, now a couple more coming in for Terry Fox. <laughs> Always a popular choice. And it's a hard decision, for oh, sure. Oh, for sure. Another uh, couple for Lada. Just give it a couple more seconds as they start rolling in. Do you think there's one candidate who has garnered the most support? It looks like uh, it's, ooh. It looks like we have a tie. So it's up to you, Boyd, <laughs> between um, Rappertin and Terry Fox. Well, that's a really difficult choice. I'm glad I don't have to make this choice in real life. It's the Minister of Finance who will be making a selection amongst these eight. But tonight for our presentation. We're going to go with Robertine Berry. I think it's a great choice. Thanks everybody for your assistance, for putting forth those names. We'll continue and we'll think a little bit tonight about Robertine Berry. So 
with the portrait subject chosen, we have some things to do. First, we'll all be really happy. We'll do a little happy dance. We'll all be very excited. We'll start conducting research on the portrait. Myself, I'll try and read everything that I can find to learn as much as I can in a relatively short amount of time. We'll conduct research as well on the portrait images that may exist of that chosen subject. But even better than trying to cram in a lot of learning is that we'll reach out to those who already know all about the portrait subject. We'll call academics, we'll reach out to museums, galleries, archives, universities, anywhere that we might speak with people who know about the portrait subject or the achievements and the subject matter that they represent. And we'll arrange a workshop bringing together a group of subject matter experts so that we can have a discussion on the portrait subject. The workshop will have a few objectives. We'll look at the various portrait images to determine which we feel might be best to use on the new note. We'll discuss the banknote theme, something that I'll talk about in a moment. And we'll also discuss the things that we might want to see on the new note, the images. And at the same time, we'll talk about the things that we might not want to see on the new note too. So visual content do's and don'ts. Let's talk about the theme for a moment. What is a theme? And why do we need it? The theme acts as our fil conducteur. It's our storyline for the new note. The theme is the idea that will help us to define the note. The front of the new bank note, of course, will feature a portrait of the iconic Canadian that's chosen. And the theme will be expressed mostly through images on the back of the new note. And we want the theme to relate to the portrait subject, to tell their story in a way that's relevant and meaningful to Canadians today, in a way that evokes pride in this country. Now, earlier this evening, you all acted as our Minister of Finance, and with your help, we chose Robertine Berry to explore in some detail. Now, we'd like to ask you to be our subject matter experts as well. If Robertine Berry was chosen as the portrait subject, what theme would you suggest for the note? Think about words or a brief idea that might describe the achievements of our portrait subject in a way that's relevant and significant to Canadians today. What theme can you suggest? If you could please type these ideas into the question box you see on your screen that you used before and our behind the scenes moderator will sort through and provide a few for us to consider. So if our portrait subject was Robertine Berry, what theme might you suggest? We'll give you a little bit of time. You could please type those into that suggestion, so that question box. It might interest the attendance boy to know um, that you worked on the Viola Desmond note as well, and uh, the theme that associated with her. If you want to talk about that while people are Sure, yeah, oh. yeah. Sorry, we have one for women's rights now for and the theme ideas for Robertine. That's a, a, a great theme that relates perfectly to Robertine Berry. Thank you. When we were, when we held a workshop with experts to discuss Viola Desmond, the theme that we reached was rights and social justice. And that's what's expressed on the vertical $10 banknote that was issued in 2018. Let's think about Robertine Berry. We have women's rights. Have any more come through? Yep, uh, more about violence against women, Canadian culture, newsprints, journalism, uh, girls' education, French language, more about journalism and information. These are all fantastic, guys. Keep them coming. They're great. These are great themes and it's hard to just pick one. Uh, that's why we work and have to speak and, and work collaboratively with experts who really know about these things. Well, great. Thank you, everybody, for suggesting those. Those are all really great themes. But we have one more thing that we want to do with you 
as part of our workshop, as part of a workshop that has you as our subject matter experts. So let's choose women's rights. If women's rights was our theme for this next note, what are some image ideas that we can now think of that might help to make this theme come alive on the new note? What would you suggest? Let's give this a little bit of thought. Again, if women's rights is our theme, what are some image ideas that could appear on a new note that relate to that theme? And here's the trick, here's the challenge. Try and think of image ideas that not only express that theme, but that would also look great on a banknote. As much as possible, those image ideas need to have visual impact as well. So please go ahead, type those ideas into the questions box for the theme of women's rights. What images can you think of? What images would look fantastic on that new vertical $5 note? Sorry, it came in late, but I just want to comment that somebody's uh, theme uh, for, for Robertel, Robertine Berry was being fierce, and I just felt like that needed to be, <laughs> that needed to be mentioned. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, <laughs> We have uh, a ballot box someone has suggested. Very good. Are there other image ideas that have come through? Not yet, but we're we'll going to give them a little bit of time. It's hard. It's not an easy job you have, Boyd, uh, well, to no. take those themes and yeah. make them into images. Oh, here we go. Uh, women interlocking arms and voting books and literature. Very good. Uh, the, oh, the Tea Party statue from Parliament Hill. So the, the famous five women. Famous five. Wonderful statue on Parliament Hill. A wonderful commemoration. Well, thank you. Those are really good ideas. There's some there that would look fantastic on a banknote. The statue of the famous five, of course, was on a, a banknote not very long ago on the Canadian Journey series. $50 banknote. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for these ideas and for being our subject matter experts tonight. This is just a little demonstration of how we start to build the content that might appear on our new note once we have that portrait subject decision. And ultimately, we take all of our various forms of visual content and we incorporate them into an overall image library. This library, shown here by what's meant to be four books on a shelf, includes the thematic images like those you've just suggested. Our image library will also include portrait image options for the front of the note to showcase that new portrait subject. National symbols, things like maple leaves, the coat of arms, Canadian flag, etc. National symbols that we include in our notes and also images and symbols to help represent Indigenous peoples in Canada, something that we're developing with an Indigenous advisory circle that is new to the Bank of Canada. This image library is assembled in a design brief that contains all of the technical instructions for our new note as well. And the design brief is provided to our skilled banknote designers who will start constructing with great creativity and expertise the new note. I can't wait to see what it will look like, and we hope that you do too. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so, so much, Suzette and Boyd, for that fantastic presentation um, and really involving everyone in it as well. I didn't think it was possible, but I am even more excited now to see what the next note will look like. Um, having been present uh, working for the Bank of Canada for a couple of the different series changeovers, it's always a very exciting time for us here at the museum. So now we will take questions from the audience. As a reminder, please select the Q&A from the upper right corner of your screen and type in your questions. We will try to get to as many questions as time permits. Um, and let's see what we have. 
So, uh, we already have a couple of questions rolling in. You guys are very popular. Um, one person is asking that we have, there was a lot of other Canadians, obviously, that have uh, contributed a lot to our history, such as Tommy Douglas, uh, Montgomery, et cetera, um, but they didn't make the short list, and they're just wondering about how that came about. That is a difficult question to answer. We tasked our advisory council of seven people with creating this shortlist, and they chose these eight amazing Canadians, recognizing that um, Canada is comprised of many different communities and backgrounds and lived experiences, and they were trying to develop a list that reflected the diversity of experience, of, of culture, of, um, of life that existed in the country. Um, I can't speak to, nor can any of us speak to specifically why they made the choices they made. Those uh, conversations were independent and um, very difficult and heartfelt, but that's all that's all we know. Um, but uh, the fact that we have 625 qualified nominees speaks to the caliber of people who are in this country. Thanks, Suzette. That's a great that's a great answer. It is a hard question, but I think it's one that a lot of Canadians are asking. So thank you for your response. Um, someone would want to know how long it's going to take to make the changeover of the new banknote. So when are we going to get to see that new five dollar note? Thanks, that's an excellent question. Um, Banknotes are very complex uh, little things that we carry around in our wallets and in our pockets. And uh, they're very complex to develop and to design because when we create them, above all, we have to make sure that they're secure so that they can be used with confidence. Um, the development of a banknote takes between three and four years. So we can anticipate uh, that the $5 note would uh, would be developed over the next three to four years and be issued uh, within about that time frame. Leaves us with lots of anticipation for, for what's yet to come. It's always great. Someone's asking, once a portrait subject is chosen, how is the actual portrait that goes on the banknote chosen, especially when there's multiple famous photographs of them, for example? Yeah, it's uh, it's very dependent on the portrait subject, but I'll speak a little bit to that. Um, as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, right when we know who the portrait subject is, we'll start amassing as many of those portraits that we can find. For some portrait subjects, they might not be very many. For others, there might be dozens or even possibly hundreds. We'll start amassing as many as we can, and we'll sit down with our subject matter experts, and we'll talk about them, and we'll go over them, and we'll talk about from which era we want to represent that person, and which photos that we appreciate and that we like. We'll also speak, of course, with our banknote designers and technical experts to that get their thoughts on which portrait would look the best on a new note. And we'll speak as well with, with stakeholders. So for example, with the Desmond banknote, we were incredibly privileged to work with one of Viola's living sisters, and that's Wanda Robson. And we sat down with Wanda and we shared some thoughts on the portrait subject with her and we collected her input as well. So that decision comes from a lot of uh, different people uh, providing input and putting a lot of thought into it. Fantastic. If it ever comes up, the era I'd like my portrait to be from is my 20s. Um, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> in any case, um, on to the more serious things. Has it been decided yet whether the next $5 note will be vertical like the 10 or is it going to be horizontal?
I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Um, thanks, Nicole. Thanks very much for your question. Uh, the $5 banknote that's under development right now will be vertical, like the $10 note that came before it. Uh, we also anticipate that the, the notes to follow in the series will also be vertical in orientation. All right, so we have an intricate question here that has a couple of parts, so you'll have to bear with me. It says, how does the bank ensure consistency of a banknote family if the bank takes several years between each note to design them? Are the engravers part of the bank or from a private printing company? If the latter, how is the interaction? Um, and is the committee of experts that choose the shortlist involved in the process of how the notes take shape? So multiple questions. So first, how do we ensure consistency amongst the notes in a series in a family? Thanks, Nicole. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, the bank is undertaking a new uh, approach to banknote design and, and how we design and develop our banknotes. So in the past, an entire family of notes has uh, been issued in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, but now we're focusing on uh, a different issuance strategy where we're developing a note, uh, focusing on that one note, and then after it's issued within a few years, looking at a different note and, and going from a five, from a 10 now to a five, and then we'll work on other notes after that. So it's a more staggered approach that we're working on right now. And what that enables us to do is incorporate the latest security features in these notes as those security features are being developed. And it gives us some flexibility to be able to react to any, uh, any, any counterfeiting threats that may emerge as well. So it's a different process that we have. And we started with a $10 banknote. And to ensure consistency in this family of notes, one thing that's helping us, of course, is the orientation, it being vertical and the, and the notes that follow will be vertical. And we'll also work with our designers and uh, internally here at the bank to determine what other uh, sort of design consistencies we may wanna do as well. In terms of the engravers and the company that we work with, um, we are incredibly lucky to work uh, with Canadian Banknote Company. This is a company the bank has been working with since the Bank of Canada was founded in 1935. And they have a group of some of the most skilled, creative experts in banknote design and, pro and production uh, anywhere in the world. And so it, it's absolutely fantastic that we get to work with that group. And we're really looking forward to working with them again on the $5 note. And the last question was about the council, uh, the Independent Advisory Council, who came up with the short list of names. And the answer to that question is no, we do not continue to work with them throughout the banknotes design. Their role is really defined to taking that big, big list of more than 600 qualified nominees and developing the uh, the, the, uh, the, the package, the recommendation that went to our Bank of Canada governor and then was submitted to the Minister of Finance for decision. I am very impressed that you were able to call up all three without having repetition. So kudos to you on that one, Boyd. Um, someone is asking if what the next denomination to be refreshed will be after the five and if that decision has been made yet or if we're still, we're still pondering. Um, I can take that, Boyd, if you'd like. You've been answering a lot of questions. But uh, <laughs> right now we work on one bank note at a time. So we'd like to finish the new five before we move on to the next one. Okay, so someone's saying in the past, Canadian banknotes have had images or scenes on the back that didn't necessarily relate to the portrait on the front. 
is there also a process underway to consider unrelated choices for the back of the $5 note? Or uh, will the images be determined by the theme, uh, the, the portrait choice as we had discussed? Um, for the for the five dollar banknote, it'll be related as I as I just went over, and we'll be looking at who the mm -hmm. portrait subject is before determining the theme. Um, the person who posed the question is absolutely right. It used to be uh, quite different, and um, what we do for future notes is something that I think that will that we'll need to consider. Someone's wondering if you do any sort of collaboration or parallel design with the mint and the coins, and if there's any communication between the two com the two crowns. When designing new notes, uh, we do not uh, designed collaboratively with the Royal Canadian Mint. Uh, their mandate, our, our coins, our mandate, of course, relates to banknotes. So the what used to be the paper money, today the polymer money. But we do speak with them because, you know, we are both creating these uh, very unique commemorative items that at the same time have that high uh, requirement of security. Uh, these are both items that celebrate Canada, the best of Canada, in a way that is meant to, to make the people of Canada, as well as visitors to the country, feel something, feel pride in, in being here and feel pr pride in this place. So there is some overlap and we do speak with colleagues at the Royal Canadian Mint on, uh, on how to do these types of commemorative projects, for sure. Someone's wondering about the popularity of the subject matter and if uh, that plays any role into the selection of um, of the the portrait subject amongst Canadians. If it's a popularity contest, I guess. <sighs> so it's not a popularity contest, um, and we. As we've already mentioned, it's Minister Freeland who will make, who will select from this list of eight that we have presented today. Um, and we only Minister Freeland knows how she is selecting that final candidate for the new five. Excellent. And we have time for one more question. Um, and we have, will the security features continue to be improved upon in the next note as they were with the 10? Um, there is uh, as I mentioned before, security is a, is a huge part of banknote design. In fact, we have principles for banknote design. They're on our website and it states that security is, is foremost when designing a banknote. They have to be secure above all else and that actually imposes limitations at time on the types of visual content that's represented. Uh, security will continue to be emphasized on the new note. Uh, it will continue to, we will continue to create notes uh, that Canadians can use with confidence. And um, I think that's all that we'll say about security at this time. So thank you for that question. All right. So that's all the time we have tonight for questions. Um, if you didn't get your question answered or you think of one after the fact, uh, you're welcome to send any of those uh, un that were unanswered to the museum's email, which we'll post in the Q&A dialog box to the right. Um, and all that information, if you don't collect it here, is also available on the museum's website. And we'll try to respond to you as best as possible. I'd also like it if you have a few moments, we're also including a link to a quick survey in the same chat box for the event. And any feedback you provide will help us improve our future talks. Speaking of, 
Our next talk will be in February of next year, so please keep an eye on our website for more information as it comes. I'd like to thank Suzette and Boyd again for their presentation and their time. It was really fantastic and we're so happy you were able to join us tonight. Thank you to everyone who's joined us and have a great night. <laughs>